Welcome to Engineers Mindset. Now, to follow up our series on trust analysis, let's say we have a problem in the board, which is analyze the trust system and determine the forces in each member. Okay, so we are given this trust system and we are asked to analyze and determine the forces in each member. First thing first, we always apply the free body diagram. That's the first thing to do. So, free body diagram. Okay, so we'll bring back the trust system the way it is. Okay. Alright, so we also recognize that at point A, we have a pin support. And for a pin support, we always have two reactions, one vertical and one horizontal. So in place of that support at A, we simply have two reactions. We simply call this ROAY and then we have ROAS. This is joint A. Okay. Also, we have a roller support at joint C. And for a roller support, we have just one reaction normal to the surface. Okay, so we have at joint C, we have a roller support. Okay normal to the surface so simply call this ROC why is it joint C okay so between joint B and joint D we have 10 kilonewtons also at joint D we have 5 kilonewtons so we have 5 kilonewtons for there acting downwards okay and we also have a 10 kilonewtons for there acting downwards okay this is joint D and this is joint E okay Alright, the cross system has a height of 5 meters, not for the fingers. So include the height 5 meters, okay? Their distance is about 3 meters each. So we have 3 meters, we have 3 meters, and we have 3 meters. Okay, so this becomes the free body diagram. Now, the essence of the free body diagram is to be able to apply these healing forces due to what this supports. Okay, now we have to employ the F minimum equation to obtain what this support actually has. So, employ static F minimum equation. So, from F minimum equation, okay, from F minimum equation, we simply say summation of force in the x axis is equal to zero. So, we sum all the entire force acting in the x direction and equate them to zero. And if we look at the system, only one force acts in the x direction, and that force is simply ROAX. So this is the diagram. The reaction at point A, ROAX is simply equal to zero. Also, we take summation of the entire force in the y axis to be equal to zero. So we consider vertically upward force as positive, while vertically downward force as negative. That's the method we don't lose. So we sum for the vertical force in the system and equal to zero. Now, the critical look at this system shows that RAY is pointing upwards, so it's positive. We also have ROC is pointing upwards, it's also positive. We have 5 kilometers for C acting downwards, so it's negative. We also have 5 to 10 kilometers for C acting downwards, so it's negative. So we take solution of the entire scalpers. We are simply going to have RAY plus RCY minus 5 minus 10. And this is still equal to zero. <coughs> okay, so R A Y plus R C Y minus five times ten simply gives us minus fifteen kilometers, and that's equal to zero. So let's turn minus fifteen over to this side of the equation. Negative sign causes an equal to sign becomes positive. So you simply have R A Y plus R C Y to be equal to 15. So we call this equation 1. So this is now that equation 1 is an equation that involves two unknown. So which makes it impossible for us to solve. So the next thing to do is to employ another epigram equation, which is simply take moment of forces about a point. So if you have been following our series from sharp and Bending analysis, I said if you're taking moment, you take moment about the point where you have numerous of force systems or numerous of forces such that the moment of those force about that point becomes zero. So if you look at the system here, on the trust system, we have two forces at point A. Okay, so it is very wise for us now to take moment at point A. Okay, 
is a taking moment out from this so that the moment of these two forces about one day becomes completely zero. Alright, so simply take moment and take. Okay, so take moment at A. Okay. So summation of moment about point A is equal to zero. Let's consider clockwise moments to be positive and then anti-clockwise moment to be negative. Alright, so let's take the moment now and see. First of all, since we're taking moment out from B, it simply means the moment of these two forces at this point becomes zero. Next, we have to take the moment of the pipe in this was about point A. Notice now that if I bisect here into two, because this is an equilateral triangle, if I bisect here into two, it means now that if I set the bisect here into two, it means now that here is 1.5 meters and here is 1.5 meters. Okay? So therefore, the moment of this force about the A is simply first of all, this force is acting now so it goes all the way from this way to this point. So it goes in this direction, which is positive to our direction of the moment. And again, it moves all the way from there to this point. This is the distance covered, which is 1.5 meters. So the force is simply um, the moment is simply 5 and the distance between this force to get the point A, and that's 1.5 meters. And it's positive because it is clockwise. So we have that force to be 5 times 1.5. The next force we have in the system is the third thing in this force. Same thing, the 5 by 6 here is equal to 2. Okay, so it looks that here is going to be 1.5 meters. I will also have that to 1.5 meters. Okay, so I will simply take the moment of this force about point A. Also, this was acting now, which means it turns towards this direction. Also, positive to our direction, so it's positive. Okay, and total distance to take this force to get to point A is simply 1.5 plus 3 meters, and that's 4.5. So, we simply have plus 10 times 4.5. Finally, we take the moment of the control reaction at point C, as arrow C1, about point A. This force is pointing upwards. So which means it turns about this direction and the direction of movement is simply this direction, which is anti-clockwise and anti-clockwise means to set it should be negative. And total distance to take this force to get point A is simply was 3 plus 3, that's 6 meters. So it moves all the way from that take moment about point A, covering the distance, 3 plus 2 is 6 meters. Alright, so we simply have minus RCY multiplied by 6 and that's equal to 0. Okay, so let's now obtain what is value sign. 5 times 1.5. 7.5. We have 7.5. Okay, plus 10 times 4.5 gives you 45. Okay, minus this is 6 RCY equals 0. 7.5 plus 45 gives you 52.5. We <coughs> have 52.5 minus 6. RCY to be equal to 0. So let's send minus 6 RCY over here. Negative sign plus and equal to sign becomes positive. So I'll simply have 52.5 will now be equal to 6 RCY. Alright, so I will now for the value of RCY simply by running both sides of the equation by the coefficient of RCY, which is 6. <coughs> Alright, so 52. Equal 6 RCY, therefore RCY itself is now equal to 52.5 divided by 6. So that's the thing like that RCY. 8.75. What? 8.75. You have 8.75 kilos. Okay, so this is what sort the of value of the reaction at point C. Now, if we know the reaction at point C, we can simply substitute this value into equation 1 to find the reaction at point A. So, simply substitute this into equation 1. Now, equation 1 gives us RAY plus, in place of RCY, we we'll simply put in the value of 8.75. And that is equal to 15. So, you have this. So, this is the main RAY subject, simply send plus 8.75 over here. <coughs> So if you put this sign plus and equal to sign, it becomes negative. We simply have our AY is now equal to 15 minus 8 minus 7 5. So this simply implies that the reaction at point A is simply 6.25. So we have 6.25 kilo 
English. So we need this cross the reaction and continue. Now, we've been now able to determine the reactions. All we need to do is to log into the system and then start the cross analysis. Okay, so we know how the table was here, so the master is off. How the is off for the table. Okay, so we've obtained how the way. How the way is of 6.25. So this is equal to 6.25 kilometers. We've also obtained RCY, RCY was 8.75, it was 8.75, it was 8.75, so RCY was 8.75, so we know how we get to the reaction points now, we can now employ the joint method to solve. Since the question says the joint method to solve, since the question says we can mine the process in each member of the process system, it means we are going to use the joint method to solve. Now, employing the joint method, if you want to employ the joint method, always go to the point where you have list of members because the members in each trust system actually shows you the amount of unknown forces in the system. For instance, at joint A, I just have two members from A to C and then from A, um, let's call here B. <coughs> okay, so I just have two members from A to B and then from A to B. So that means I just have two unknowns, which is this member A, B. AB. But our joinability that I have was from B to A, I have from B to B, I have from B to C, and then from B to B, and then from B to C. So, which means I have numerous of unknowns that was joint B. So, so, the number of members in each joint tells us the amount of unknown at that joint. So, always start with the joint that has the least amount of members. So, we can start with joint A or we can start with joint C because at this point we just have two reactions, two unknowns, which is this member. And this member. So consider joint A. <coughs> consider joint A. Alright, so I say that if you're taking the joint method, it means you have to exclude or isolate each of the joints and then analyze current equilibrium equation. So if we are considering joint A, it means we are going to have um, something like this. This will have a joint A. We have something like this at joint A, okay? So we have this reaction, R A Y, and R A Y equals simply 6.25 kilo newtons, okay? <coughs> so this is what we have at joint A. Now, I said in the introduction review that each member of the trust system carries two equal but opposite forces, and these forces are, can either be in tension or in compression. And it is now our responsibility to assume the direction of this force. We can assume tension, we can also assume compression because we don't know the force now in this member from A to B. So we cannot assume tension or we can assume compression. But if we assume a direction and we obtain positive, it means the direction we assume is actually correct. But if we assume a direction and then we have negative, it actually means the direction we assume was wrong. It doesn't mean the answer is wrong. The answer remains correct, but the direction was actually wrong. Okay, so since I don't know any direction here, I will now assume that the force from point A down to point E, which is this force, from A down to B, let it be a tensile force. So I'll simply say tensile, remember tensile force actually pulls out of the system. So I'll simply have this. This force is simply force at joint A, since I'm considering joint A, relative to joint B. <coughs> Same thing happens here, since I don't know the force between A to B, let me also assume that force to be what? A tensile force. So I'll simply have this force moving from joint A. So the tensile simply means it pulls out of the joint, it's not compressive. So this force is simply force at joint A relative to joint B. <coughs> so notice now that if I draw an imaginary line, let's say I draw an imaginary line, okay, to connect this point. If I draw this imaginary line to connect this point, Okay, so I will note that this has automatically become a two-force system or a two-dimensional force system where force at joint A related to point D is now inclined at an angle either to the horizontal or to the vertical. So we need to now find this angle to the horizontal and that to the vertical. So let's take now, let's go back to the diagram. In the diagram, we have that if when I bisect this point, I can pick up this triangle. Okay, you can pick up this triangle. Due to bisection, and then we'll have something like this. This is 1.5, remember it was 3.9, or 3 to 8. 
the corners. So I have this base to one point five meters. <coughs> and this height of the meter also be given as simply five meters. So we have the height as five meters. So it means I can actually find the angle here. Let me call this angle theta. So it means I can actually find the value of the angle inclined by that. So because this is joint A and this is joint E. So it means I can actually find the angle of inclination. So using and theta, employ your <coughs> trigonometric identities. Employ your trigonometric identities. You have tan theta is simply opposite all over adjacent. And opposite is 5. All over adjacent is 1.5. So I will have that tan theta is equal to 5 to 1.5. 3.3. We we'll have 3.33. So, which means theta is equal to tan inverse of 3.33. Tan inverse of 3.33. So, we simply have 73 degrees. So, it means that the angle here is actually 73 degrees. So, that means the angle that we have here is actually 73 degrees. And if here is 73 degrees, oh, of course, we know that the angle on the quadrant is 90 degrees. So it means here it's going to give us simply uh, 17 degrees. So the angle to the vertical is 17 degrees, meanwhile the angle to the vertical is 17 degrees. So we have this. <coughs> so the essence of obtaining this angle is simply because this force now, force at joint A related to E, is a two force system, or what you simply call a two dimensional force system. So there is always a need to resolve this force now to the vertical and the horizontal. Remember that this is the vertical line, which is simply y component, and then this should horizontal line is simply the x component. So what the first point we write is simply what the positive x. So the first point of course is simply positive y. For every first point to the left is simply negative x. If the first point downward is simply negative y. Now, to resolve this force in two dimensions, I said, please do well to watch my two dimensions videos for proper understanding. For to resolve a force in two dimensions, you simply hold the of the arrow of the force. Pull the force to meet if I want to resolve the x axis now, pull the force to meet the x line, which is this. And again, what the direction of the star if it points to the right or it points to the left. And then I said, if the force passes through an angle, multiply the force by the cosine of the angle it passes through. But if it does not pass through the angle, simply multiply the force by the sine of the angle, it doesn't pass through. Alright, so let me resolve this force now to the x axis. I will hold it from this force, pull this force to meet the x line. Notice that this force will go all the way from this point to this point, covering this angle in 73 degrees. So, which means I'm going to multiply this force by cosine of 73. Also, if I pull this force to meet this line, this force points in the right direction, which is positive horizontal direction. So, you need this force going to have a positive component in the x axis. Okay, so let me represent this component, horizontal component here, because here is already occupied. So, this could be likely to be the horizontal component of our force. So we have it going to be pointing to the right and the value remains F A B cos 73. So cosine of the angle we pass is going to get to that point. <coughs> okay. Now I want to resolve this force from vertical as a same Hold the equal of the arrow of the force, pull the force in the the vertical line. If you pull the force in the the vertical line, observe the direction of the arrow. If it points upwards or downwards, that's the first thing. Next thing, which angle will it pass through? If it passes through an angle, simply multiply the force by the cosine of the angle it passes through. So if I pull this force to meet the vertical line, this force points upwards. So I will have this force pointing upwards. Okay, and again, if it passes through, it moves all the way from this point to this point, covering this angle 17 degrees. So I will simply multiply the force by the cosine of the angle it passes through. This simply is to F A B cos 17. Okay, so I've now been able to resolve this force that's inclined into two dimensions. One is horizontal and one is vertical. So I can now employ a equilibrium equation for this joint A. So employing the equilibrium equation from equilibrium, <coughs> from equilibrium equation, okay, we simply said summation of the entire force in the x axis, that the summation of the entire horizontal force is equal to zero. So we consider now forces pointing to the right to be positive and then forces pointing to the left to be negative. Okay, so I write that now as if we watch the system, we have this force 
FAB pointing to the right, the first adjoint is ability to point the going to the right, so it's positive. We simply have F A B. We also have this force F A B cosine. The point to the right, so it's also positive. Plus F A B cos seventy three. Okay, these are the only two horizontal forces we have in the system. So we sum them up and equate them to zero. So we can simply now send F A B cos seventy three over to the side of the equation. So we simply have F A B. FAB equals minus FAB cos 73. Okay, please, what is cos 73? <coughs>
meeting. So you have one point nine one kilos. Now notice that we assumed tens are F4 the first agenda related to point B. We assume the tens are for that the force is pulling out and we also obtain positive as answer. So which means the direction of action was correct. So that will be joined the force at joint A related to point B and force at joint A related to point uh, E. Alright, so we are now putting these reactions. Next is to pick up another joint, another simple joint to start with. So we can simply start with joint C. Okay, so we look for another simpler joint to start with. Of course, now at this point, if I move to joint E, already I know the force that exists between A to B. You see the same force from A to B, so this joint has been known. The force at this joint is already known, so I need, I just have two problems here, one and two. So which means I can actually start with joint E if I wish, or I can choose to start with joint C to also find out these two problems. So let's start with joint C and C. Let's consider joint C. Consider joint C. Consider joint C. Okay. Now, at joint C, we have something like this. Now, uh, we simply have this. At joint C. And then we we'll have an upper force here. The value is simply RCY and it was 8.75 kilonewtons in joint C. Okay. okay, that's correct. Also, we do not know the force between joint C related to B. Um, we don't know the direction of the force. Also, we don't know the direction of joint C related to point B. So let's now assume. Okay, since we've used tension in the first case, let's now assume compression. Let's say this force is actually moving into the joint. So it's the compressive force. Let's say both forces are moving into the joint, so they are compressive. Now this is force at joint C is related to point B. So F C B. Meanwhile, it's the joint force at joint C related to point D is F C D. Okay. So from point D, from point C related to point B. From point C related to point B, so we have that. Okay, so like I said, if I now draw an imaginary line, if I draw an imaginary line and connect these points together, I want you that this can become a two force system. This is my positive Y and this is my positive X. So this has become a two force system, and this is also sure that this force FCD is actually a triangle angle in that of the horizontal or the vertical. So we need to find what this angle is. So let's get back to the diagram now. Notice that the same thing happens that if I pull out this triangle triangle, the height remains 5 and the base remains more than 5. So I will still obtain the same angle as I obtained there. This angle is corresponding to this angle, so it will be the same thing as 73 degrees. So the angle remains 73 because this height is given as um, simply 5 and the base is 1 by 5. So if I find this angle, I can see that it's open if it's 5 or by 5 is 6, 5 by 1 by 5. So I will still obtain the same angle, 73 degrees. So it means the angle at this point, the horizontal, is simply 73 degrees. So that means the vertical is simply 17 degrees. So I have this. So having known this now, I have to now resolve this force to the vertical component and also the horizontal component. Resolving this force to the vertical component, simply hold this of the arrow, pull the force to meet the vertical line, observe the direction of the arrow. If I pull this force to meet the vertical line, this arrow will point it downwards. So I will have something like this. The arrow points downwards. And the value of the force is simply, now I said, if it passes through an angle, multiply the force by the cosine of the angle it passes through. If I pull this force to meet the vertical line, it passes through 17 degrees. So that means I'm going to have this with FCD multiplying by cos 17. Cosine of the angle it passes through. Also, if I resolve this force horizontally, hold the tip of the arrow of force, pull it in the midst of the horizontal line. If I pull this force to meet its next line, which is the direction of this arrow, this arrow also points to the right. If, if I pull this force to meet its next line, it also points to the right. So which means I'll have this force pointing to the right. And then it passes through what 73 degrees to get to the horizontal components. So I'll simply multiply F C D by force 73. So that becomes the horizontal component of the force. So I'm going to resolve this force with the vertical and horizontal component. Next thing now is to employ the equilibrium equation on the joints. Okay. Okay, um, let me take these forces off. The force at joint A, 
force at joint AA, we said it's 6.53 kN compressive. So we'll keep it somewhere. Let's keep it somewhere here. F A B. 6.53 kN compressive. And we'll also update F A B with 1.91. Stands like F A B one point nine one kilo. So it stands like <coughs> okay. So employ the equation from F to the one F to the one of we have that solution F of X is equal to. Zero. So we consider what are going to the right as we see, what are going to the left as we see. Okay? So let's do that now. We have this force FCD pointing to the right. So this force is positive. We simply do FCD. We also have FCD pointing to the, to the right. So it's positive. FCD cos 73. So it becomes cos F. FCD. Cos 73. Okay, these are the only two forces that we have pointing in the x direction. So we simply put this to zero. Okay, so let's make FCD now subject. FCD is not equal to simply sign plus FCD cos 73 over here. Positive sign plus and equal to sign becomes negative. We simply have minus FCD cos 73. This cos 73. 0.2920. So this simply implies that FCD is equal to what is cos 73? 0.2923. So we have cos 73 0.2923. So we simply have minus 0.2923 FCD. So call this equation 1 as you can see. Call that equation 1. Okay, next you can employ um, the next equation law of solution of force. In the vertical axis equals zero. Let's consider vertically upwards as positive, vertically downwards as negative. So we have this. So we we'll look at the system now. We have FCD cos 17 pointing downwards, so it's negative. We so simply have minus FCD cos 17. And also we have 8.75 kilometers was pointing upwards, so that becomes plus. 8.75 equals to 0. These are the only two vertical forces we have on the system. So we can simply send minus FCD cos 17 over to this type of equation. Negative sign cos 17 cos 17 becomes positive. So we simply have 8.75 equals FCD cos 17. Okay, so to make FCD subject, divide both sides simply by cos 17. That simply implies that FCD itself. Is simply 8.75 all over cos 17. Therefore, FCD is equal to 8.75 over cos 17. We simply have 9.15 kilo newtons. Okay? And since we assume tension, we said the force from joint C getting to joint D uh, is compression, sorry, that's FCD, right? Yeah. Since we assume compression, we say the force is pulling into the joint. We assume compression and we have positive as the answer. It means the original direction is actually about compression. It's correct like that. So it means this force is actually about under compression. So you can see we see in front of this. It means we are correct. Had it been we assume compression and we have positive, sorry, we have negative as the answer, it now means that the force was actually to be in tension and not in compression. So we assume compression and we have positive. It means that the really direction of that force. So it's correct. Okay. Now having known the force in the and the member C D, we can now substitute that into equation one to find the force in member C D. Okay. Let's do that and see. Okay, so from equation one, we have that F C D equals minus 0.293 F C D. So F C D equals minus 0 0.2923 in place of FCD we simply put in the value as what 9.15 okay so we'll have 
9 times 1, 5. Okay? So that's the thing you can that. FCB is equal to minus 0 0.293 times 9 plus 1, 5. So simply you have minus 2.67 kilo newtons. Okay? Since we are shown for first the number C to B, which is this, uh, C to B, which is this, we assume compression. If you check the diagram, so let the force come into the joint. We assume compression, but we have negative as answer. So it means the reverse is supposed to be the case. So it actually means that this force is not supposed to be compression, it's supposed to be in tension. That's why we have negative. We assume compression and we have negative. So it actually means that the original direction of this force is actually supposed to be pulling out of the system and not into the system. So it's supposed to be in tension. That simply implies the matter. F C B is now equal to 2.67 kilonewtons in tension and not compression. That's what it means. So if you assume the direction and you have negative as answer, it means the direction you assume is actually wrong. It's supposed to be the reverse direction. But if you assume the direction and you obtain positive as the answer, it means the direction you assume is actually correct. Okay? So that becomes that is for the first thing numbers. CD and members C. Let's take that uh, forces up. We have FCD. FCD is equal to uh, 2.67 okay, tension kilo newtons in tension. Okay, and FCD is equal to uh, Now let's consider another joint. So we've done joint C. Let's now move to joint D. We've done joint C. Let's move to joint D. Okay, so since we move from C to D, it also means from D to C to so we can move to D and simply find D to D and then D to D. So we consider joint D. Alright, so let's consider joint D now. Consider joint. D. So at joint D, uh, what we we'll simply have um, is this. Okay. So at joint D, we have something like this. Okay. We have this. We have this. And then we we'll have a force of 10 kilometers. 10 kilometers. And joint D. Okay, so this is what we we'll have at joint D. Alright, so since we already know the direction of the force along CD from joint C to D, we obtain that force as simply 9.15 km compression. So remember that we assumed uh, uh, okay. Okay, we assume compression for C D. Remember we assume compression for C D and we still have the value as positive. So which means compression is the mid direction for, for the force between joint C to D. So it means that this force is actually what entering into the joint. So that means the opposite force should also be entering into the joint. I told you that all systems involve two equal but opposite force at each of the members. The forces are equal but they are opposite in direction. So if we had positive for joint C, D, and then we had the force of positive that's under compression going into the joint, it means at joint D also the force should also be going into the joint at point C. So we'll now signify that it's already known. So the force between D to C is now into, into the joint. This is the force at joint D related to C. And these two forces are equal. Please do well to look up the introduction video. As I said, the force, the force on each member are equal but opposite in direction. So the force at C um, to the force at joint C related to D is equal to the force at joint D related to C. So if you are considering joint C, the force are equal, the only problem is that they are opposite in direction, but they are the same force. So FCD is equal to FDC. And we obtain FCD simply as 7 point, 9 times 1 by kilo units. So it means this force is equal to 9 times 1 by kilo units. So we have that. Also, uh, this is joint D related to E to B. This is now joint D related to what? Joint B. 
This is Gen Z, ready to Gen Z. So let's also assume, let's now assume tension. It's your choice, any direction you want to assume, you can assume. So let's assume tension for all. Uh, okay, let me give the force at Gen Z relative to point E. And let me give the force at Gen Z relative to point or Gen B. So you have this. So as usual, uh, if I draw an imaginary line there, if I draw an imaginary line there, notice that this force is said to be in two dimensions. It's said to be two force systems. So we have this force, FDC, inclined at an angle to the vertical or to the horizontal. We also have FDD, inclined at an angle to the vertical or to the horizontal. So all we need to do now is find out these angles and see. Let's try to obtain those angles. Okay, so by setting their energy to we need to find this angle here, okay? We need to find this angle here, and we also need to find the angle here. So let's pull out the triangle, okay? Or continue the triangle here, let's pull it out. We have this. This is James D, and this is James B. This is simply 1.5 meters, and this is simply um, the height means 5 meters, okay? And we need this angle called the theta. So it's still the same thing. Uh, we need to come with theta and try the same um, to the metric law. Tan theta is opposite. Opposite now is 1.5. So you simply have 1.5 all over adjacent. Adjacent is 5. All over 5. So tan theta is equal to 1.5 divided by 5. Okay, so this is for 0.3. So we make theta subjects. It is not equal to tan inverse of 0 0.3. It is equal to tan inverse of 0 0.3. So that's actually 17 degrees. So the angle at this point is 17 degrees. Okay, so this angle is simply 17 degrees. Okay, so this angle here is 17 degrees. That's how you get that angle. Also, we need to find the angle inclined by solar force. Okay, which is at this point, we still need to give us the same angle because it's opposite all of our other samples. So let's call it like alpha. The angle will be the alpha is equal to opposite, is still 1.5, divide by the other sense is 5. So you see the same angle as 17 degrees. So the angle of that force to the Pascal is simply also 17 degrees. So you have that 17 degrees as well. Alright, so you have that in 17. So if here is 17, it's obvious that here is going to give us 73 degrees. Which means also here is 73 degrees. Okay? Alright. So, like I said, the idea now is to resolve these two inclined forces into vertical and horizontal, since they are both inclined. Let me start with this first now, FDD. I want to resolve this force in the horizontal direction, simply with the tip of the arrow of force. Pull the force to meet the horizontal line. If I pull this force to meet the horizontal line, notice that this force will point to the left direction. So observe the direction of the arrow. If I pull this force to the left, this force points to the left. If I pull this force to the horizontal, it points to the left. And again, it passes through, it moves all the way from this point to this point, passing through at 73 degrees. So this force will point to the left. Um, okay. Let me keep it here. So since it points to the left, I also said multiply the force by the cosine of the angle it passes through. So that's in the FDB uh, cos 73, since it passes to 73 degrees. Also, we want to resolve this force to the vertical, for the of the of force, pull it in the vertical line. Observe that this force will point downwards, and again it passes through this angle, 17 degrees. So multiply by cosine of the angle it passes through. I will simply have it points to the down, vertically downwards, and it passes through 17 degrees, so it becomes F. D, D cos 17. So that becomes this force in two dimensions. Okay, next is FDC. FDC already has a value, 9.45 km. Now, if I resolve this force to the horizontal, notice that both the force out of the force, pull it to meet the horizontal line. Notice that this force will point to the left. If you pull this force, out of the direction now, if you pull this force to meet the X line, it points to the left. So you have this force point from the point to the left. 
and it passes through what 73 degrees Celsius to get what the horizontal component is. So it becomes the force times cosine of the angle it passes through. And the force is set is given as 9.15. So that means the horizontal component of the force is simply 9.15 cos 73. It says it passes through 73 to get there. Also, we want to draw the force of the vertical line, pull it for the arrow, pull the force to meet the vertical line, observe the direction of the arrow now. The arrow points in the vertical direction, so it's pointing up, pointing upwards. So it's positive. Okay, so I have this force pointing upwards, and it goes all the way from this point to this point, covering 17 degrees. So the value is going to The force is 9.15, so you have 9.15 cos 17. Okay, so we've now been able to resolve these two forces into horizontal and vertical components. We can now employ a program equation to solve for that answer. Okay. Alright, so from here we draw the solution of force in the x axis is simply what is zero. So we must have force pointing to the right as positive, force pointing to the left as straight. Okay. Now let's add that one. On joint D or at joint D, we have this force FD pointing to the left. So it's negative. Simply as minus FD. Also, we have FDB cos 73 pointing to the left, so it's negative. Minus FDB cos 73. Also, we have 9.15 cos 73 pointing to the left, so it's negative. Minus 9.15 cos 73. Okay, the whole of this is equal to zero. There is no other force in the x axis, so the whole of that is equal to zero. So this will give us uh, minus FDD, okay, uh, minus FDD, please. What is cos 73? 0 0.2921. Yes. Okay, it's 2 to 3. So cos 73 is 0 0.2923, so this FDD. Alright, minus is 9.15 cos 73. So we have 2.68 um, and that's equal to say according to 2.68. Now let's send um, minus 2.68 over to this side of the equation. Negative cos is an equal to send the positive. So I will simply be left minus FD minus 0.2923 FD. To be equal to 2.68. Okay, let me go to the equation. Let me see. So call this equation 1 as joint C, as joint D. That's equation 1 as joint D. Okay, next equation force. Solution of force in the vertical as 0, vertical upward as positive, vertical downwards as negative. Uh, so we have FDB cos 17 pointing downwards, so this force is negative. So we simply have minus FDB cos 17. We also have 10 kN force acting downwards, so it's negative. Minus 10. And then finally we have 9.15 cos 17 pointing upwards, so it's positive. Plus 9.15 cos. 17 and it's equal to 0. There's two other vertical right there. So that's equal to 0. So if we have this now, cos 17 is what? So we have um, cos 17 is 0 0.9563. So we have minus 0 0.9563 FDB minus 10. Okay, now please, 9.15 cos 17 is what? 9.15 cos 17. 8.750 cos 8.75 and that's equal to 0. Okay. So minus 0 0.9568 FDB. Okay. Now minus 10 plus 8.75 is simply minus uh, 1.25. 
So let's simply send minus 1.25 over to this equation. Negative sign plus and equal sign becomes positive. So I have simply minus 0 0.9563F dB is now equal to 1.25. Okay. So I can make F dB subject simply by the value of the equation by z minus 0.9563. Okay. Okay, so FDB, FDB is now 1.25 divided by minus 0 0.9563, 0.9563, please 1.25 divided by 0 0.9563, minus 1.31 kilo, yes, it's approximately now. For joint D, relative to point B, we assume tensile. We said let the force be going out of the joint. We assume tensile and we are having negative. So it actually means that the direction we are is strong. So which means this force is supposed to be a tensile force, it's supposed to be a compressive force. It should actually be going inwards. That's what I mean. So that simply implies that F D B is now equal to. 1.31 kilo newtons compressive. So you have that. So that's the force agent D, it is a D. We can now substitute this force into equation 1 agent D to find F D, force agent D, which is force D. Okay, let's take this part off. This is equation 1. So we simply have uh, minus F D E. Minus 0 0.2923 in place of FDB. In place of FDB, we simply put in minus, remember, it's minus 1.31. So simply put in the value as minus 1.31. Okay. And this is equal to 6, sorry, this is equal to 2.68. Alright, so minus FDB. Minus 0 0.2923 times minus 1.31. So we we'll simply have plus 0 0.38. So remember, minus times minus automatically becomes plus. Okay, and this is equal to 2.68. Okay, so um, as always, let's blend 2.68 over to this side of the equation and then send minus FDB over to this side of the equation. So negative sign plus an equal to sign becomes positive. Now we simply have um, on this side we have 0 0.38. So we we'll simply bring this over here. Um, we we'll simply bring 2.68 over here. 2.68 is positive because an equal to sign becomes negative. So I'll simply have minus 2.68 and that's equal to now 0 minus FD is over here. Negative plus an equal to sign becomes positive. We simply have plus F, D, D. Okay, so 0 0.38 minus 2.68. That should be. So we simply have minus 2.30 kilo to F, D, E. Now, due to that, we also assumed uh, from G to joint E, we also assumed tension, we said let the force go out of the joint, and we are obtaining negative. It only means that the redirection of that force in that joint is also what? Compressive and not negative, so not tension. So it should be going out, it should be going inwards. So therefore, F D is equal to 2.30 kilo newtons simply compressive. Put C as the value compressive. All right, so we've obtained forces in members A to E, A to B, C to D, C to D, D to B. So we are left with what? Uh, first the members E to D and then E to Okay, we'll move E to D. What do we do? Same as E to D. So we we'll pick up the final joint now. The final joint is simply what? Joint E. That's the final joint. Okay. So let's bring this first to now. We have FDE as 2.30 kN compressive. So FDE. J D E equals 
kilonewtons compressive, and then you have FDB, FDB as well, 1.31 kilonewtons also compressive, FDB, 1.31 kilonewtons compressive. So now we consider that T, which is the final gene stuff, and then we will find the force between E to B. So let's consider the final joint now. Consider joint E. Consider joint E. Okay, so at joint E, we simply have uh, something like this. We have this, and then we have uh, this. Okay. Then we have the force of 5 kilometers at an joint E. Is five kilo newtons joint E. Okay, so we already obtain the force from joint D to joint E. We obtain that force as two point three zero kilo newtons compressed. So which means the force will pull it into the joint. So if from D to D, only that joint will be compressive. It also means from E to B should also be compressive. Two equal but opposite force. The two forces are equal but should be opposite direction. So it also means. For this joint, the force is also to be compressive into the joint. Okay, so from D to D is compressive, and the force is known. Now this is simply force at joint E relative to D. For so it's still the same thing as the force at joint D relative to E, and the value remains. Um, Two point three zero kilonewtons. The value remains 2.30 kilo newtons. So you have that. Okay. Now between joint E to joint D, between joint E to joint D, we don't know um, the direction of force. So let's simply assume tensile. Let's assume tensile that the force is going out. Okay, so we'll simply assume tensile. This is force at joint E relative to point D. We we'll assume tensile. Also between joints E to joint C, also between joint E to joint A, we already obtain the force from A to E. We obtain from A to E at simply 6.53 kN compressive. So it's actually supposed to be pulling into the joint. So compressive rate is supposed to come into joint A. So which also means from E to A, the force is also going to be going into the joint. So it's compressing, it has to compress into the joint. So from the product of that value at 6.53 kN is compressive. So it means from E to A is also going to be compressive, which is this. So this is a force joint E related to A and values um, 6.53 kN. 6.53 kN. Okay, yes, correct. Okay, so that's how the free body type of that joint looks like. So all we are looking for now is simply the force at joint E related to point B. That's all we are looking for. So if we also apply this section, let's say section here now, draw an imaginary line. Notice now that this has automatically been called a two-dimensional force. This force FAB is inclined in the vertical or the vertical. So let's find the angle of inclination. Okay, since we know all the force, it means to find this form that you can simply employ one if you one law, you can get uh, the reactions. Okay, let's first for example all these forces that are employed. Alright, so we need to get the angles, and to get the angles, we need this angle of inclination. Here is theta, opposite all over adjacent, same thing as. Opposite is 1.5, which is 1.5, all over adjacent is 5, which is the height. So, same thing as 17 degrees. So, the angle between A and E in the vertical is 17 degrees. So, this is A and E, so the vertical. So, this angle is 17 degrees. Also, the angle between E to B, this angle here between E to B is also opposite 1.5, all over adjacent 5. So, it's still the same thing as 17 degrees. So, the angle still remains 17 degrees. So, all here. 17 degrees, so you have this. So, all we need to do now is resolve these two forces to what vertical and horizontal, vertical and horizontal. 
So, like I always say, if here is 17 degrees, it means here is 73 degrees. Always find the angles in quadrants. So, if here is 17, it means here is also 73 degrees. So, if I want to resolve this force with the horizontal, simply hold it for the arrow of force, pull it in the means horizontal line. Notice the direction of this arrow now, and the horizontal line, this force points on the right. So, it points in this direction. And the value is simply F E B times cosine of the angle it passes through. The angle it passes through to get the vertical horizontal line is in the same straight degrees. So you simply have F E B cos 73. Also, resolving this force vertically downwards, hold it for the arrow, put it in the vertical line. Note that this force points downwards when it gets to the vertical line. Put it direction, it points downwards, and again it passes through at 17 degrees. So you simply have the force times the angle it passes through, which is F E B cos 17. You have that. Next is the 6.5 kV this force. This force, resolving this force vertically, hold it for the arrow, pull it to the vertical line. Notice that this force points upwards, this is the direction of the arrow. So if you resolve this force to be this line, it still points upwards and passes through this angle 17 degrees. So I will have this force pointing upwards. And the value is simply equal to 6.53, 6.53 cos 17. And if I resolve this force to the x axis, horizontal component, hold it for the arrow, pull the force to the horizontal component. This is the x line. If I pull this force to the x line, it points to the right. If I pull this force to the x line, watch the arrow direction, it points to the right. So, which means it's pointing to the positive x axis. And then it passes all through from this angle to this point, which is 73 degrees. So I'll simply have this force pointing to the right, and the value is simply 6.53 cos 73. So I'll be able to manage all those forces in the two dimensions. I'll be to different dimensional conflicts. Now, I will now employ the equilibrium equation. Since I'm only looking for FED, I can choose one of the equations, one of the equilibrium equations, I will still obtain the same answer. So let's say summation f of x, of course we know is equal to 0. Force that points to the right is positive, force that points to the left is negative. Okay, so we have this now. Let's pick up all the force we have. We have 6.53 for 78 pointing to the right, so it's positive. This is 6.53 cos 73. We also have f e b cos 73 points to the right, so it's positive. So this is plus F E B cos 73 point to the right so it's positive. And uh, we have also on the system we have F E B which is 2.3 pointing to the left, so it's negative. So minus 2.3. Okay, is F E B point to the left, so it's negative. And that's all the positive force of the system. The whole of this is equal to zero. So please, 6.5 cos 73. Plus cos 73 is 0 0.2923 F E B minus 2.3. So um, this is simply saying 1.9091. Collecting like times now, we have this equal to this. Okay, so we have minus 2.3 plus 0.2923 F E D and this is equal to 0. So 1.9091 minus 2.3. We have minus 0 0.2923 F E D minus 2.3.
So this will require the force agent E limited to E is actually 1.3 kilo newtons, and the direction action is for tension. So we see we have we tension the agent. Yes, we assume tension. Uh, yes, we assume tension and then we obtain positive so unit direction is correct. Alright guys, that gives us the entire force acting on the joints for that force system. I hope you enjoyed that wonderful video on thrust analysis. Please if you do, share your thoughts in the comment section and of course like, share and subscribe to the channel. I will see you in the next video with more questions on thrust analysis. Thanks guys and cheers.